the Super Bowl is here, and in the Super Bowl is a team from Los Angeles, California. Unbelievable run by the Los Angeles Rams to try and match what the Bucks did last year, although they've already kind of bettered it by winning a home game in the NFC Championship game to make the Super Bowl in Los Angeles happen for the Rams and the general manager of the NFC champion Los Angeles Rams, Les Need, back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Les? I'm good. How about you, Rich? All right, great. I was just asked by one of my guys here about people blowing uh, you up for tickets or anything like that. You you must be. Do you have do you have a, do you have a perimeter built around you? Security perimeter built around you, Les, for this week. You, you definitely need a, a perimeter for sure. And it, it was it was probably uh, perfect timing yesterday. But it was interesting for some reason. My phone did something and like so the contacts weren't really matching you know they weren't showing up on my text so all i was getting was these numbers yeah and you know there's always the congratulations right at the oh, beginning oh no they, so you got to be new was, phone who this is that what you're gonna be like yeah, less like yeah, i mean but what, what i was like, holy cow this is either good or bad how do i handle it and, but like like a lot of things in life i you know it probably took me longer and more frustration than i should i just actually figured out how to turn it off and power it off. Well done. Let it take a break, and then came back on the contacts were there. So, mm. um, Crisis but yes, I averted. Could definitely use a, uh, you, could, you could definitely use a, a, a let's call it a, tick, a staff of ticketers, if that's the word for them. No less, just two uh, on the home two, side. Stop, no big deal. Stop. Don't worry. Home side, it, it, all good. Don't, don't, don't listen to him, oh, Les. He'll, he'll just go to the secondary ticket market. Don't worry about that. Don't do that. <laughs> Um, so, Les, let me just jump in here. What does a general manager of uh, uh, do in the week leading up to a Super Bowl? Like, what is your job? What is your role, Les, right now? You know what? There's no manual of that because it, it's definitely hard to get to this game. But I, I think the I, I think the best thing that that I can do in this role, right, is, is to help Sean, his coaches, make sure we alleviate the distraction, right. <laughs> Of the, of the party that goes on along with the Super Bowl. Because at the end of the day, right, I probably – I know I can't help him figure out how to score points on the Bengals or stop them uh, from scoring. So, uh, we, you know, obviously we have a personnel staff that's helping them with their, you know, you know, let's call it who's good, who's bad, who's impactful, who's not all, – all those things that they're working together. So, and I also think once we get through the initial, hey, where are we at injury wise? What roster moves do we have to make? Things like that. Do we need to clean this thing up for the Super Bowl? It, you know, my job's really to 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 right help do my part in in making sure that group is not distracted and focused on uh, right the main thing, and that's competing for this world championship. So, who may be on that? Who, who's on that radar screen right now, health wise? Right now, for the Rams for Super Bowl Fifty Six, I think what we, you know, the interesting thing, what we have, we have two weeks here, and and, and Tyler Higby had an injury during the game. So mm-hmm. the nice thing is we get two weeks to try to get him back. He's an integral part. Taylor Rapp has missed some time, and so he, you know he's on his way. But there, the 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 roster management of it all too is we, you know, we we have uh daryl henderson that is beginning to get back to practice sebastian joseph day and some of the some if you want to call it the gm maneuvering with head coaches hey do you actually activate those to the to the roster or do you keep them on ir and and with that right comes deletions from the roster which is always a hard thing to do this time of year right if you're gonna i I mean you're gonna cut someone the, the week of the super bowl things like that but so you you really sean and his group Raheem, his group, they, they game plan. Joe D, his group, and, and and like what positions may be more valuable? Do you go heavy tight end, running back, things like that? So a lot of those little nuances that probably are boring your listeners. Uh, no, this is what I asked. I mean, this is important stuff, you know, obviously for the Super Bowl, and then there's other stuff going on. Uh, what can you say as we're sitting here right now about your offensive coordinator and uh, how he looks in purple? I mean, is that something that you – know about with Kevin well, O'Connell right now? This, uh, right. You know, here, here's what I can say. I, I, I think uh, uh, he'll look good in purple, and I think if if that comes to fruition, uh, and I think I think the Vikings are getting a heck of a, 
uh, head coach. I think he's got some unique experiences. Like yeah, being that quarterback, right, drafted by the Patriots, being in the meeting room with Tom Brady, Josh McDaniels. There's some there's some unique, real unique experiences that not a lot of head coaches can bring, right, or offensive coordinators can bring to a team because only so many people get a chance to play QB. And then, and then he was a journeyman, per se, which was probably – a negative right when you're playing like I can't believe I'm a journeyman but if you're gonna you're gonna become a long time coach right being able to bounce around to to different teams different coordinators different way of doing things it, it, it allows it allows you your you know your bag of tricks of like what you'd like to do what you definitely not like to do but for all the listeners in Southern California the interesting thing is is if you if you know Southern California if you kind of know the beach communities like there's this kind of like big deal when you're young this thing called junior guards right it's like the lifeguard it's almost like going to camp with the lifeguard Uh so i can say there probably hasn't been a lot of right nfl head coaches who wear purple in minnesota who was a junior guard back in the day i didn't know that you're going deep down the roster here of information so uh so kevin o'connell is is it let's just put it this way uh, could wind up uh, somewhere else, and it appears that he is. So, uh, what what do you think of the fact that 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 your con- your your staff keeps getting raided year in and year out, um, including the guy who's coaching against you in this year's Super Bowl? It, I, I, again, I think it's a it's a compliment to the ecosystem here. Uh, so, and obviously, anytime it, it happens, we're we're very excited, right? There, someone earned a, an opportunity, right? And and heck, a, a one of thirty-two type opportunity. And 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 there will be there. There's been guys, and there will be uh, some that move on to be coordinators. Now, on the negative side of that, Rich is is wow. We got to. I used to say it's on the positive side. It's always fun. Uh, it's always interesting to try to go find right up and coming, difference making type people to to add to the ecosystem. What definitely uh, gets exhausting at times is is orientating them, training them in the way we do things. So right. it seems to be a constant. But at the end of the day, right, it would be what we call a champagne problem, right? Because <laughs> usually people, other teams only they like to let's call it promote people from successful programs. So that's, that's the rose of the thorn. Les Sneed, general manager of the NFC champion Rams here on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, does it help though, to know Zach Taylor for a game like this and have Sean there and you know him, he knows him. And uh, obviously, you know what he's been able to cook up, but uh, is that a benefit? Do you think in actually X's and owing this Super Bowl 56? That, you know that that's a good question, Thank and, you, and I was uh, listening to uh, interesting. I was listening to Willie McGinnis last night, and uh, and you know Willie, and and they all love Belichick, right? But he he was arguing on NFL Network that Zach had the upper hand because he knew Sean, and mm. and and I I. I I forget who it was that asked him, well, would you ever say that about someone who left Belichick, that they had the upper hand? But interesting listening to the, the wise on that. We all know Willie now is like, no, I would never say that one of the people had upper hand on Belichick. So at that, But it, I, what is interesting, we definitely – I think there's benefits, but I'm not sure it, it moves the needle in any way because there's a lot of similarities to right – what they do and and how we do things, but there's also definitely some uh, derivatives and differences. Uh, but it, so that but it does make it it very in, intriguing matchup as as Sean and Zach and their staffs begin to you know pl- you know design the the chess match chess match against each other. Now, obviously, you weren't going to be in the mix for the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft. Although with you, you can never tell. I mean, you you know. <laughs> There's, there's no such thing as an impossibility when you're pulling any trade off or what have you, as you have proven less need. But uh, what was your evaluation of Burrow coming out of LSU? And now you're seeing him just two years in, standing in your way for a ring and a Lombardi. Well, it, Les. Uh, it's, it's interesting because we weren't going to be right in the mix at number one. And at right. that point, right, we weren't really looking for a QB. So 
it would probably waste my time to do a really deep dive on on someone like Joe Burrow just because to try to figure out a quarterback uh, and, and get that right. I mean, it, it's almost like you you got to spend all your time on that and then and get somebody else the rest of the draft. That's that's an exhausting process. So what is that? Then what, I, then, then, what I, then what is that process, Les? Because, again, you're seeing Burrow do what he's doing, and clearly you made that – uh, evaluation of Stafford have, uh, to go ahead and make that maneuver, and here they are both Super Bowl quarterbacks. So, w- what is that evaluation that's so difficult to make? I'd love to pick your brain on that. Evaluation, right? And, and I think what you, what you have to do, right, is you're trying to figure out Stafford. Be, Stafford being one, hey, he's played in that's person situation, right? You see him, you see him do it against NFL players, mm-hmm. NFL schemes, right? But can't. You know, so it's person situation where you know he can be a successful NFL quarterback. Uh, situation is, can he come here, right, help move the needle in terms of wins and losses and going deep in, in the playoffs? Burroughs in college players are a little bit different because you're seeing them against, you know, college players, and will it translate to the NFL? But I, I do know, even though I didn't do an exhaustive mm-hmm. uh, evaluation of Joe, LSU has a lot of players. Their conference, the SEC, has a lot of players. So, Probably watched about every game Joe Burrow had, and 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 what what you what's interesting is he's playing against a lot of NFL players. What you, and he's got a lot of them on his team, but he definitely the systems translated. It was it was college football, wasn't totally a pro system, but they were asking him to to make NFL type reads. Uh, uh, so you, you could some of those evals like okay, I think Joe Burrow's really, really got a got a chance, and and he was fun to watch, and and felt like that was a a really good bet. I do remember texting Zach Taylor, and I, or maybe Sean and I called him, and I forget how they finished the year. It did seem like it was a tough loss, but I remember us telling him, you know what, you'll be glad you lost that game because <laughs> you get to draft Joe Burrow and. Life will get better down the road here. So, yeah. So now here you guys – isn't that amazing? Now here you guys are in the Super Bowl uh, against one another. Um, less need here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And so, you know, obviously we saw something that Stafford could do it. What made you think he could do it? And now you're in the Super Bowl right now with him, Les. What about that? I think I think when, you, when we evaluated right uh, – Matt, it, it, the, the system fit. He's he's the he's he's one of the ideal QBs for for Sean because in Sean's offense, right? It, it's it is an element of traditional pro style, uh, a little less of the college brand. So so Matt had been doing that, right? Heck, not only in Detroit, he did that at Georgia, and he probably did that at in Pee Wee football because in those days there was really not a lot of spread going on so he had had a lot of reps at right right leading guiding steering a a pro style offense but i I think that the thing you immediately felt when you watch hey he can make every throw he can make decisions he can make them quickly uh but when you really got to do a deep dive in him you're like wow those are you know those no look throws he would make where he's manipulating maybe linebackers at the second level safeties at the third level and no looking over here but because he just knows the concepts of the d and how that would just really throw them off you got to feel his his toughness of taking a hit getting right up shaking it off the ol you could tell the ol love blocking for him because of that and and it's like nothing happened and, and you got to you also got to see those those comebacks that a lot of a lot of us didn't get to see because the lions Right, didn't play primetime games or things like that, and uh, but that was definitely something on his resume. But to, that's one thing uh, to see it, to vet it, but to partner with him and live it, and I think it came to fruition right in the in the Tampa game, right where you you see him be Matt Stafford and and do all the things right, and the defense play well, and you got a twenty seven three lead, but you also see him be Matt Stafford when holy cow, how is this game tied? <laughs> And it's 42 seconds left, and you know what? He had the he I like so whatever's in his DNA to be able to take the snap and make a couple throws, clock it, and Matt Gay kicked the game winner, and the rest is history. I think that 
that's when you go, holy cow, that's that's special. Yeah, and then, of course, to have, you know, the 69th overall pick, third round of the 2017 NFL draft in Cooper Cup now be a triple crown winning threat and an MVP candidate of, of absolute note and total bona fide threat right there. Aaron Donald maybe being, uh, you know, in the discussion of greatest defensive player ever, a first round draft choice by you. You know, the additions of Odell Beckham Jr. this year, along with Von Miller, made everybody say, well, Les, it's all about this year or nothing and uh, Eric Weddle my god he's now playing like you can't take him off the field he went from the couch to being able to you can't take him off the field and he's now a leader in the locker room I know you got a Super Bowl to win but what what is it like to be a general manager pushing buttons and having them work when everybody's wondering if you can make it work less well I, I think the, the all ending I think there's I think, heck, we were all in, like a lot of teams, right? We were all in probably when we were building, Rich, and 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 you're all in on the build. That's that's where the, right? We were probably doing it opposite of what we're doing now. We were trying to collect, collect first round picks and and add as much young talent as possible, right? To grow together, build a core, and 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 you're you're trying to be intentional, but you're hoping that you're. You break through, and we're fortunate enough to break through. And I think you know when you do break through, if you're fortunate, there's your window. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to take advantage of it? And I think, I think we we've got a little bit of a philosophy here where the hey the math says right when you're trying to be one of 32, you should probably be thinking a little bit differently, right than the other 31 because it uh, it's a tight league. Everyone's good. Uh, you know, <laughs> most organizations are highly competent. Uh, so that's kind of our philosophy. But you we're fortunate enough to get in this window, and, and, and we're going to try to do everything possible to take advantage no, of it. I knew you wouldn't spike the football. I knew it. But uh, is it true, Little Birdie told me, you got a standing ovation at a local Starbucks walking, just merely walking in this week? Is that a true story, Les? Is that true? Boy, sometimes my wife's Twitter account <laughs> gets me in trouble, right? <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, you know, the... the the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so you I'll, okay? So you walk in. You walk in, and then everybody starts breaking out and gives you a a, a venti of appreciation. Is that basically what happened? Wow. Last. You know, and it's, it's kind of your core core group. It was a little core bit group. earlier. So it's the core core group. A lot, core of, group. a lot of people who work at Starbucks. Sure. But that I I I'm okay talking about that, Rich, because there's been many a Mondays where I've woken up and said, you know what, I'm not doing coffee today. <laughs> I can't. I can't go play some music. Okay, All you know, right. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make it at home today. Okay. So. Uh, All right. You know that so that may be the best thing about winning in the NFL is when you get a chance to walk in on a Monday after a win. Mm-hmm. And get a and get a stand a Starbucks standing O. Um, so I guess the last one for you then, Les. Um, Harder Hearts. You know, obviously, you know your roster inside and out, so you also know what might be uh, exploitable. Knowing again who is coming your way, Burrow, Chase. Uh, knowing uh, how opportunistic this defense has been uh, in its playoff run. What can, what keeps you up? Maybe when you, if you wake up middle of the night staring at the ceiling, go, I got to talk to Sean about this. What what do you think is 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 your Super Bowl fifty six threat level on that front with the Bengals coming? Yeah, I, in? I think you know it, it. I always you know like I mentioned earlier, I try to stay out of the way in, in terms of, of game planning. Uh, that's that's not my area. But at the end of the day, I, I think what we'll focus on because when you whoever you're playing, this team's really good. Like you mentioned, they they've done a nice job. Uh, right, let's call it solidifying their their eligibles to 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 uh you know let's call it catch the ball run the ball all those things around a, a dang fun qb to watch like you said they, they got a lot of veterans on that defense so that allows them to that allows them to I, I, hey change their scheme right they'll they'll scheme according to an off similar to maybe the patriots a little bit they adjust quickly at half you can see i mean obviously that was on display against Kansas City where there's a, it looks like it's over. They do some things at half. Next thing you know, they win the game. So anytime you play a game this magnitude, the, the opponent's good. So I think what we try to do internally here is, is, is focus on what we do best. And then at that point, how does that translate into attacking them mm-hmm. and, and, and go out and, and, and compete and 
try to be great when it matters, and and, that, and that's all you you can do. All right. Because at this point in time, when you're playing for 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 one of thirty two, and there's only two left, the opponent's going to be dang good. Plus, what else you got to do, right? I mean, the senior bowl, you don't have to ask anybody there. You have no draft choices left. So it's, <laughs> right, Les? Who cares? Right? You know, that would be, that would be, uh, that would be, uh, let's call it accentuating the, the shallow narrative that we, you know, that we have the draft picks. You know, we mm. do, we do have a, we will have a lot of picks. They will all be on day three, but there's a chance we have 10 plus picks on day three. Okay. As you know, so. Les, um, having known me for a while and I've known you, I am an expert at, at accentuating the shallow narrative. That is what I do professionally. So, um, I and you appreciate do it well, Rich. You know, you, <laughs> I'm the best at it. Well, damn, damn right, I'm the best. Entertaining at content. Thank you, sir. And anytime I start getting nuanced to the second and third level of you yeah. know compensatory formulas, yes. and, right? You know what I mean? Yes. You, you, it, you, it, I, your listeners love it. I can tell you, I'm losing <laughs> you though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Les Need. I'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. All Enjoy right, the week. You. Take care, man. There you go. Let's need everybody. Coffee junkie. First team all hair. First team all hair. General manager of the (laughs) NFC champion Rams. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.